What is going on there, citizens of the Reject Nation? We are going to watch today the movie Nope from Jordan Peele. John, how are you? I couldn't be more excited. You ready to be super intelligent today? Yes, I am ready to be intellectual to the utmost degree. Filmmaker talk deeper meanings. Well, look how smart look we are. how gonna... observant oh I am God, of subtext. We understand and nuance. thematic nuance. Well, you know what to do. Leave a like. That would really help us out in the algorithm. Also, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. Got a lot coming out over the next few weeks. Also, full-length reaction watch-alongs where you sync up with your own copy of Nope over at our Patreon page. Become a super sexy reject today by checking out everything we got to offer over there. Cover a bunch of shows exclusively over at our Patreon with reaction highlights and watch-alongs included. A team of prepper. Thank you for helping us edit down these highlights. Let's swing into action. Whoa. Huh. What happened at the Ed Sullivan show? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> ah, it was like a UFO. <laughs> the lamp shade. <laughs> Smart. Someone was moving in the background there, too. Where are your sister? What's that about? She's supposed to be here. Yep. Look at that frame. Yeah. Well, I told you to fix the damn walker. Oh. Sounds someone screaming in the clouds. Oh shit, was he Whoa, hit? Oh no. Pops. Oh no. Oh, what an image, too. Oh, classic Western. What else? What else? Ghost. Uh huh. Beethoven. Uh huh. Uh huh. Commodore. Yeah. Oh! Yikes. <laughs> Whoa. It's like all that woman's belongings just. Sprayed across the valley. This is OJ, our horse trainer. You remember these guys from Flashpoint? Yeah, hi. Uh, your name is OJ? <laughs> oh, man. I think my sister's gonna be here in a minute. Louder, please. We can't hear you in the back. I'm so sorry about that. Let me do it. Sorry, brother. Safety meeting. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello! <laughs> now, I know you guys know. Edward Moorbridge, the grandfather of motion pictures, who took the pictures that created that clip. But does anybody know the name of the black jockey that rode the horse? Nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> that man was a Bahamian jockey that went by the name of Alistair E. Haywood, and he is my great-great-grandfather. Great. There's another great. Great. That's why back at the Haywood Ranch, as the only black-owned horse trainers in Hollywood, we like to say since the moment pictures could move, we had skin in the game. <laughs> uh, and I'm Emerald Haywood. I direct, write, produce, act. I do a little singing on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have a stack of business cards. <laughs> yeah, Em. Call me. Hey, 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 man. If she can't get near the back of the horse, what are we doing here? Hey, 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 hey. Ah! You need it. No, I know. Your dad left an enormous hole. I know that, but don't worry, they'll be ass. All right, I'm sorry. Oh, bummer. Oh, shit. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. Photobomb. <laughs> Jordan Peele does like his amusement fair attraction parks. And now you can visit this at Universal Studios. <laughs> Who'd you bring me? Uh, Lucky. It's my second best horse, you know. Like, he lost focus. I mean, I did too, but I can't fire myself. <laughs> yeah, my pops told me about this show. The monkey went crazy or some shit. You know, I usually charge a fee for this. 
Oh, damn. Da -da. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> damn. Nope. <laughs> that's the first exploding fist bump. Holy crap, he's got so much about this. It's one of the chimps that plays Gordy just, just hit his limit. And it was six minutes and 13 seconds of havoc. Network tried to bury it, but it was a spectacle. People are just obsessed. <laughs> you kidding me. And now you can capitalize off it. <laughs> Real geek show. It's legendary. Legendary shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to go ahead and look that one up on YouTube. <laughs> details, you know. Totally. Very productive meeting. Homeboy is disturbed. Pops did something when he made this place. He changed the industry. That's real. I can't just let that go. Why is Ghost in the arena? Uh-oh. <laughs> That's good. So much of this seems to be about the unspoken historical impact that certain people had. And the way in which it's like so arbitrarily pushed around and yeah. erased and changed. Now it's got some fun spooky shit. Come on. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> got my thinking done. <laughs> <laughs> now make it rain metal again. Oh, Holy dude. balls. You doing dr dressage over here. Hey! Where are you going? <laughs> you guys need walkie-talkies. <laughs> Was that Steven Young? Yeah, I think so. He's capitalizing on this. so much yeah right the two of them together polar opposites but they're whoa what'd you see that was big how big big <laughs> it was fast too fast too quiet to be a plane are you saying what i think you're saying terrorists <laughs> 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 call the fbi <laughs> Well, I'm saying there's plenty of videos of flying shit online. I saw one the other day that wasn't on Oprah. I didn't say Oprah. You said Oprah. You love Oprah. <laughs> Who doesn't? Ain't nobody gonna get what we gonna get. What we gonna get? The shot. What shot? The shot. The money, money shot. shot. Undeniable. Singular. The, the Oprah shot. <laughs> <laughs> but the outages affect the power and the battery shit too, like cell phones. All right, cell phones, they don't just drop in power, right? I mean, maybe your Wi-Fi drops out whenever your system dips. So, that's technology. This is why Fry shut down. Yep. <laughs> Some assholes like you. I mean, half the staff was kind of like this. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Look at me, man. Fuck. Don't do that. Don't yell. Sorry, man. Sorry if I was, like, a little shut down this morning. The shit. <laughs> I know it's going to sound fucking cliche, all right? But I thought that she was the one. Where are you going? I gotta go to the store and get stuff. Don't worry about it. You need anything? Her name was uh, Rebecca Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> it's shitty footage of exact proof that there's an alien civilization out there in the universe. Intergalactic travelers looking for peace. Futuristic humans coming back in time to stop us from destroying the planet. Or they're fucking world killers. No, not that. I can monitor the feeds remotely myself if you want. Free of charge. Hell no. no. Oh, he's gonna do it anyway. So what now? I don't know what you wanna do. I'm gonna do whatever you wanna do. Well, I got some work that I do. I'm gonna go out. <laughs> it's a good one. Really can't wait to talk about the characterization between the two of them. Yeah. There's not enough time to get into it in the middle of a reaction. Mm -hmm. So 
one was a lot more uh, direct. Yeah. Than I was expecting it to be. Yeah. <laughs> Even just with all the alienness about it, it's just like, nope, that's just uh, what we're dealing so with. I only saw that one trailer. Yeah, so same. I'm like, wow, this is that would be a little bit more of like, would be like an hour and a half in. And then yeah. we, then we start getting I don't real. know what's going <laughs> on <laughs> yet. <sighs> what the shit? Uh, uh. Oh, damn. It's so eerie. Nipple chills. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> nope. Mm -mm. Nope. No. Nope. 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 <laughs> yep, pretty much. That is the reality of the situation. <laughs> cool, what a great nice. shot. Oh, no. Whoa, no. Whoa. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't mess with Jupiter's claim. Are you trying to prank Haywood? It's on! You stole that horse. Go get him. Go get him, M. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> Camera B is down. What? Camera B is down. Like ancient fucking aliens down. <laughs> this is more fun than I expected. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, here it goes. Shouts out to the sound design department, man. Yeah. Oh. Oh. What? Oh, is that the horse? I think so. The metal one, maybe? Yeah, it took the bait. It's going to be freaking Doc Brown in this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Cinecloud. Cinecloud. Oh, Jay! Oh, chills. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Run, OJ! Run! Oh, I got goosebumps like everywhere yeah. right now. <laughs> Dude. This is a really cool shot. <sighs> Wicked. No. Oh, no. that's really sad. Aliens are up there like, you tricked us. I want the real thing. <laughs> wow, that's close to the ground. Love the way they're depicting this ship. Of course. Max oh, was in on it. No, maybe it was intentionally put there. Yeah. They don't have the technology to put the cameras out. <laughs> <laughs> but we can influence a praying mantis to block our path. <laughs> I got a uh, pretty damn superb lemon tart in the oven I'm about to serve to ten of my closest friends, so... Stop, 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 stop. Oh, hold on one second. What? He's not here for that. Look, look at him. <laughs> no. <laughs> According to... American Cinema Magazine, you make the cinematically impossible possible. Well, we're looking for the impossible shot. <laughs> That's impossible.
dream you never wake up from. <laughs> I don't like them. <laughs> what? Uh, what a strange cinematographer. <laughs> yep, doesn't move. Exactly. Oh, eerie. Are you guys telling me that there's an alien spaceship in that fucking cloud right there? It doesn't move like a ship. What if it's not a ship? What does he mean? Uh, Gordy? Yeah. What? You're going back. And of course, I said it to Icelandic time because we share a love of the Aurora Borealis, Gordy. You have no idea how to tell time. Great gift, Dad. I need to think things through. Surprise! Wow! Now that is a gift! Sorry, fine. Sorry, right, pick it up from there. <laughs> Wait a minute. What happened to we both? <laughs> that was very real. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I was done. Ah, damn. <laughs> oh, <Harry. laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Get out. Get out. No. Movie makes me scared to work with animals on set. <laughs> Same time they had to use animals on set to make this movie. They had to, it all had to work to make this nightmare a reality. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. Oh my. Ah, what was your objective, man? <laughs> <laughs> what did you think you were gonna do? <laughs> You're not the Wrangler. Oh, he liked him. World's first exploding fist bump. Everyone thought that was a horse's hand in the tr in the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are they gonna be human horse hybrids? Oh, oh my, god. my god! Damn it! Nah. I mean, I know Gordy wasn't the best, but uh, I want to thank you guys for coming out here. But first, clouds not moving. I also want to give a special thanks to an old co-star of mine and my first crush, Mary Jo Elliott. Everyone. Oh, she survived. Dang. Oh, oh, wow. I could barely see my hand in front of my face for the fog. But I swear on my wife and children's lives, I see a flying saucer. Oh, damn. That's why he's here. Old Trigger took off straight into the gulch. Well, it's like he was going home. Oh my god, is he sacrificing the horses? That's what it looks like from here. <laughs> nah, they're coming out to play today. It's not your cue. <laughs> Uh, stay in your seats. This is new. Uh, they're early. <laughs> Which is... Huh? Wow. What? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> cool. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Reverse birth canal. I want a refund. <laughs> I am leaving a one star review on Yelp. <laughs> oh man, 
man. You were just fucking. If you just brought your <laughs> damn camera, OJ. <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> you are lucky. Woo. <laughs> and now you get your horse back. Come on, man. Platoon two together. Oh, no. Oh, you hear them? That is eerie. No. no. Oh, wow. Whoa, Whoa shit. Jeez. Oh no, was OJ taken? From underneath it kind of looks like a big cowboy hat. Mm, fan theory, this is when OJ died. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is his death hallucination. <laughs> As his brain floods with serotonin. <laughs> Come on, man. You're one of the smart ones. Shit. <laughs> it ain't the man. It ain't the mom. It's a lava. Eh? It's an animal. It's territorial. Oh, damn. This is his home. <laughs> really? Uh, I guess that thing could be a mouth. <laughs> what does Gordy have to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Jesus. Oh god, I guess it is just an animal. Digestion complete. Oh god. Something very bad is happening. Oh no. Oh, oh <laughs> gross. We're fucked. Oh, oh man. Gnarly. I love it. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yes! What an image! <laughs> that is awesome. Oh my god. <sighs> you know, people told me this was great on IMAX, and now I, I'm starting to see why. <laughs> why? Oh! oh, oh. Is the one that got away? Nope. <laughs> 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 That thing is spiteful. It knows. Uh. <laughs> wow. I love it. You're in its world now. <laughs> Playing chicken. I actually wonder if there is like fan theories based off of what I said. This I, does look like some weird, like hellish purgatory we're, landscape. We're in Silent Hill now. <laughs> <laughs> trying to lure it. Yeah, or yeah, give them a signal. Ish. She won't make it. Oh, yeah. She won't make it. Oh, hey, horsey. Hey, don't, don't look at her eyes, please. Yeah. Don't look at the alien. Huh. <laughs> don't look up. That's, I bet that's what he wanted to call it originally. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, Adam McKay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what about Lucky? I wear my sunglasses and I gotta feed him. Let Lucky out. 
Oh, come on, man. There's shit to do. Always. Always some shit to do. Oh, wait, no, I totally misunderstood. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he was saying feed Lucky. <laughs> no, he's yeah, just going to yeah, go yeah, back yeah, and make I, sure I, Lucky's I, not I miss, dead. I misunderstood. <laughs> I misunderstood. It took a second. <laughs> <laughs> I cloud. I moved a goddamn inch. He noticed. <laughs> How about we send old jean jackets and fresh horses and golden hour and see what happens? <laughs> Most beautiful UFO footage. Just set them free. We're not doing that. Okay. Characters remain likable. <laughs> Save the horse moment. Made her myself. No electricity. Didn't I tell you this motherfucker was gonna come up here with a non-electrical camera? Let's go, boy! <laughs> <laughs> he's mad. He's got a lot of spirit. But anything with a spirit can get broke. So you break it. I'll get the shot. <laughs> it's probably the first time that guy smiled in 10 years. What we're doing is important, right? Like, what we document, it's, uh, it's going to do some good. Get your girl back. He was a one eye, one horn, flying purple people eater. <laughs> one eye, one horn, flying purple people eater. Ironic, they'd use Monopoly pieces. I like that one of Jordan Peele's main motifs is like taking in a a popular or innocuous song and making it horrifying. <laughs> it's got the Scorpion King on it. Go from Rage Against the Machine right into Scorpion King. You think the news stations would try to find them? Yeah. <laughs> Wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. Man down. <laughs> man down, what? Where? Last answer. Deep in the gulch. Stay on it, Em. I'm staying up. God, this guy must really have money if his one for me is on IMAX film. <laughs> Who's this asshole? Man in black on a white motorcycle. Oh, he wants to get a glimpse too. Let him be the bait. Yeah. Yep. You see that cloud? <laughs> Love it. Oh, I'm sorry. Who are you? What is that voice? Oh my I god. Know. What did happen with Jim Park and all those people? He was basically your neighbor, right? So what? They vanished? You don't believe the flood narrative, do you? Guys. It's TMZ. <laughs> Let TMZ be the bait. Yeah. You're lost, nobody. You made TMZ your choice. Is so cool. <laughs> Riding a motorcycle. What happens when an electric bike going 60 miles per hour hits an anti-electric field going in the opposite direction? Get him. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> this movie's so much more of a sense of humor than I expected it to. Yeah. It's his funniest <laughs> horror movie. I told him not to go. OJ, let him die. Where's my camera? Hey. I need hey. my camera. Do you see it? Angel. What? Angel. Come on. We got to reload. <laughs> I, mean, I would have just waited till shit started going out. Yeah. Can't just afford to roll all day on that shit. Please get no. you out, shit you out. No. Shit you out. Not before you take a picture. Ah, just take a picture first. Christ. Oh, Scorpion King. Make a name for yourself. What is that? My bad, man. Oh, my God. Come on. Angel, I swear to God, if you... You better I not. I can't. Ooh. Oh, fuck. Love the old timey score, too. Who's? Goosebumps, everyone. 
Don't look up, man. Don't look up. Don't you know the rules. Look up. <laughs> Don't look at its mouth eye. <laughs> you hear <it> screaming. <gasps> Somebody give me my camera. <laughs> I need the footage. Oh no. Oh no. Holy shit, I, I think it's taking the dancers. Are you getting this? I sure friggin' hope so with that film load. <laughs> He's become the cowboy. <laughs> Make an agreement. Yikes. <laughs> Go, <Wilshire>. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Whoa. The texture. No, it's not. No, no, it's not over. It's gonna be all right, Angel. We don't deserve the impossible. What? <laughs> hey, host. Oh, wait, hold on, man. Help me. What happened? Get the shot again. Over. <laughs> he lives just, just for the best shot possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Spit the camera out and have a found footage movie. Stop looking, dude. No, no. No, Angel, no. Oh, yay. Yes, good. Oh, is that his film reel? <laughs> yeah. So we got it. The reel popped out, piece of the camera. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, shit. Oh, dang. What's it doing? Bye. Ouch. Uh. No, the records. There? Oh, thank God. <laughs> Holy God. It's like a intergalactic jellyfish. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Jay. Come on, work together, guys. No! Oh, man. <laughs> oh, that's really heartbreaking. Oh, no. out of range. Jeez. Damn, 
what a great shot. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Bad I haven't seen Akira, but he did the Akira slide. <laughs> Good R catch. R.I.P. Jordan Peele's Akira. <laughs> Is this part of the plan? I, I guess. He's gonna fuck you up. <laughs> oh shit. Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Smart. Wow. <laughs> Get the perfect shot. The impossible shot. <laughs> I'm gonna take you to Oprah. <laughs> nice POV. Yeah! Get the shot! The <laughs> shot! <laughs> and it was a golden hour. Gotta hurt it. Oh, yeah. Oh. There we go. There we go. Yes! Yes! Yup. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you put grenades inside of that thing? <laughs> Should have planned this out better. You could have rigged <laughs> something explosive up on a farm. <laughs> Hide the photos. Yeah. Hide the photos. Hide the photos. Come on. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. my man. And <laughs> it's like it's pointing at him. <laughs> yeah. Perfect shot. Doesn't get any better than that. Justice for Gordy. Justice for <laughs> Gordy. <laughs> All right, got my jacket on. That was a experience right there. What an experience. So much to talk about. So much to go into. So much. From the filmmaking to the characters to the many different themes you can interpret here. There's like so many different ways to interpret, um, you know, from the obvious stuff about capitalism and <laughs> exploitation of real life things obsession with fame greed but then also like redemption uh there's i, I love the arc of the just love i love the book end of this of, of how this haywood family has just been disregarded they were they were so integral to the development of hollywood and so it, mean, it means a, like it makes so much sense why it's so important to them to get this shot and i and i even love that 
allegory. I don't know, not an allegory, but like a, a supplement of of doing a western and instead of shooting a camera, uh, shooting a gun, you're shooting a camera <laughs> and yeah, you get your final yeah. shot. Get the stand off <laughs> yeah. at the end. Yeah. yeah, the final shot is with the, with the lens instead of a gun. I'm like, oh, that's so that's so cool because it's a western showdown at the end. It's a western finale. Yeah, and and it, but the instead of a gun, we're shooting. You're you're shooting with a lens, you know. And I think that's really neat. But also like the the gratification, the importance of of how they should have had this staple and be cemented in Hollywood and and be recognized their family history and lineage. And now they got the shot, they got the proof, they got the evidence, they got it all, and now they can have the legacy they deserve. So I think it's just such a neat ending uh, when you bookend it with that. But uh, yeah, anyway, John, why don't you why don't you really <laughs> kick it off? Why don't you really kick it off, John? No, I mean I I absolutely agree with everything. You no, did. no, nope, nope. Sorry, that's what I should have said. I agree with everything you just said. I mean, I was really dazzled by this, and I feel like this is a deceptively straightforward movie. I think it's perhaps one of of a you know of the three Jordan Peele films we've seen thus far. This is perhaps the one that to me communicates the biggest sort of convergence of themes that are shared and i know in the past he's said you know like the humans are always the monsters in my movies but i feel like this kind of breaks from that in a in a very interesting way and yeah there's a lot you can glean about uh i don't know like like i feel like with the fact that they are animal trainers and you meet them on set in this moment where everyone's like trying to have a safety meeting, but clearly nobody is really that concerned for safety and they just kind of want everything to go on their schedule or whatever. And then you look at the stuff with Gordy and I feel like there are certain comments being made about just like the, the assumption that we have control over all of this and, and that everything does kind of run at our whim and whimsy. And uh, and the ways in which, you know, we orchestrate these fantasies and, yeah, we er we erase real life history, even though the evidence is actually there and we push those details around and we recontextualize them. And and yeah, like th there's it's yeah, it feels like a deceptively straightforward film because like the, the main plot is pretty straightforward. But yeah, it's like, OK, why are we choosing to focus on this particular array of characters who work in and around the film industry? But all of our yeah protagonists or our main ensemble are people who, you know, are pieces of that machine, but they're not the famous ones. They're not the ones at the top of that food chain. And, and it's interesting to see how, you know, you got Jupe, who has clearly taken, you know, aspects of his childhood experience as an entertainer and is reworking and repurposing them for, you know, his current living uh, as like a sideshow attraction and probably banking on the idea that people know that Gordy incident. And I love that, especially with him, they give him these little moments of reverie and they'll give you maybe one flash of like the traumatic event he's actually experiencing as he is actively participating in the spin. So I don't know. I mean, there's so many places to start. I feel like, but I mean, I guess the heart and soul of this is is uh, uh, Daniel Kaluuya and Kiki Palmer. Like at the at the heart of it, like I love their their dynamic and the way in which they are two completely different characters. And without doing too much deep diving into here's their backstory in their past, and here's a flashback of the both them as kids and we're gonna see like they they really communicated how and why the characters exist the way they do just through the immediate performance i felt like yeah with, <clears throat> with the oj character he's someone who there's always this sense because there's a sheep his his dad keith david uh exudes such a uh, a charisma and confidence that uh, and a determination and focus that even um emerald has you know and he doesn't have that and he's even shunned on set at the beginning of this film you know like he doesn't have the energy and he's not even looked at as being all that great he's maybe not the best businessman either they don't like they're not deep diving into it but he clearly he's not looked upon as being good enough and then by the end of the film with him to arc into this of like oh he the fact that because you got these two like different characters here with brother and sister which by the way i love that jordan peele like explored different relationships like how get out is a uh, boyfriend and girlfriend and then us as a family and then this is brother and sister i think it's really cool that he's like established these very specific dynamics to dive into but like with emerald you you get the sense that 
you know, she probably grew up on this farm and then wanted to get away and yeah. have a little bit more of a city life mm. <laughs> and, and really uh, enjoy herself and get into entertainment in some form. You know, like cause she's even promoting that for herself and like this isn't what I really want to do. Whereas like OJ didn't seem to really pursue any other avenues and kind of just got pushed into this and he's stuck here. But this is act- and then by the end of the movie, you're seeing like by the finale that everything that has sort of weighed down on him and everything he's had to endure. He this is his strength and he gets to utilize that. And it also creates this great sense of pride with their family by the end of it. You know, like we're. Emerald is someone who's kind of been running away and sort of rejecting this and is uh, helping out right now. Yada, yada, yada. I'm just going to grab my stuff and get out of here. But then by the end, when they take down that alien and she's like, don't fuck with the Haywood family. Like, I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Like, it is a story about the, it is, at the end of the day, a story about the brother and sister more more than anything else, mm-hmm. you know. And also, um, I love the supporting cast a lot, too. The guy plays Angel. I thought he was great. <laughs> he, he has that. At the beginning, I was like, ah, you're kind of frustrating, but he's just so funny in his cynicism. And then eventually you're like, oh, no, no, he's a good guy. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's a cool guy. And Michael Wincott, too, has such a not, such a great presence with that gruff voice of his. And he's someone I've grown up watching a lot because he's been around for decades. And never quite got the level of fame I think he deserved <laughs> because mm-hmm. he does carry such weight with him whenever he's on screen. And whenever he's on screen, anything, even if it's like a shitty movie, he tends to be someone who steals the show. Yeah, he he is a high caliber actor, and I I loved it. I think there's a lot of commentary to be made all around, but like just sticking to the filmmaking aspect side of it, I think it's really cool how this movie does at first just seem like just a straightforward UFO movie. I'm like, okay, it's kind of got that science feel is what it was picking up on. Like, mm-hmm. ah, you're not really gonna see the aliens, but it's an alien invasion thing. Okay, it's abduction. All right, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then to actually turn it from a sci-fi movie, I mean, it's still sci-fi, the, the genre that comes next, but to turn it from an alien sci-fi movie into a monster movie mm. was even cooler to me. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, what a flip. What a what a turn. And it does kind of make you think of films like, uh, not so much Jurassic, I guess to a certain way of Jurassic Park, monetary, monetary gain. With this mm-hmm. larger than life cr- creature, yeah, but like like, like King like King Kong actually, uh, I think is a, is a good thing to to pull from. Like with King Kong, with like a filmmaking crew, we got to capture them, you know. Yeah. And so I think there's a lot of these cool riffs of different different genres just spliced into here, from sci-fi, monster movie, western. Uh, I don't know if the right term would be buddy comedy, but in some ways it is. It's, oh, funny. Sure. it's funnier than I expected it to be. <laughs> like, yeah. It's a lot funnier than I thought it would be. Yeah, and there's a lot <laughs> that's played off of that dynamic, and there's a lot of humor you wouldn't have expected that comes out of especially the the OJ and Emerald relationship and other characters like Angel and whatnot. Like there's there's a real quirkiness of character overall, but I'd say Buddy is a is a fair yeah. assessment. I like Steven Young's performance a lot. I thought the Gordy thing was gonna like it. Like strong, it seems like it's more of a metaphorical thing. I'm not even sure how to really pick up on it full, fully. Like you were touching on some things, I was like, oh, okay, okay, that's, that's better than what I, I was maybe picking up on. It, but well, I, I think you have to respect nature in a way. Like there's a food chaininess about all this to me because I mean I feel like with Gordy, there's some element of the power's not out, but that shoe standing straight up just reads as some kind of weird alien influence on the situation, but more so than that. And as he's telling the story, you don't even know if that thing about the jungle is true, but you can see it reflected in the scene when, you know, OJ is setting up with the horse and trying to do the safety meeting. It's like these people are expecting that, yeah, this this animal is just going to be our prop and do what we need mm-hmm. it to do and everything's going to be fine. And yet this is still a part of nature that, yeah, you need to make that agreement back and forth with. And just the way that we might have plucked this creature out of obscurity to dance for our pleasure. Now this creature has moved in and is, <laughs> you know, eating up and swallowing people and, and, you know, feeding like a predator would. Well, I think also there is a a, a lot that which I find I would really be curious this is the one part of this whole movie that I'd be curious to know about the onset treatment was for. Was how they did because I mean obviously Gordy was CGI yeah um, but then you know you got a bunch of horses in here and there's been controversy over the years of use of animals in films I know a lot of animal lovers who hate the use of any animals in films like it's just something that they don't feel like animals should be doing 
just generally speaking. And a lot of times, you know, if uh, it's something that easy to be like, eh, whatever, like it's easy to roll your eyes and gawk at what they're saying. But every once in a while, even for myself, I'll hear things and I'll be like, eh, that's actually not a bad point, <laughs> you know? Hey, bad and, things happen. Yeah. And then even with like having a chimp on set, you know, like that could be a disastrous situation. Because this is not their environment or the one they should the, the environment they should be inhabiting, you know what I mean? Yeah. And no matter how much there's an animal trainer, it's not the life a, a chimp wants or needs or deserves. <laughs> yeah. So there is a strange like type of. But I was, I'm thinking more of how to how does it tie into the whole thing? I think it just mainly serves the part of the theme. At least what I was getting from it was with the, the again the gate the capitalism side of this movie of trying to find that monetary gain again because like all Steven Young, this Jupe character has such a traumatic incident, but yet tries to profit off of it now mm -hmm. and tries to exploit it. And now he's got another opportunity with this alien thing that he's discovered. And now how can I profit it's off like of a this? Recreate, it's like yeah. a weird psychological recreation, but also yes, yeah, circa that like, yeah. got to get that picture. Got to, got to use this to my advantage. Yeah. It's like an alien sighting is, is, well, by and large, it would seem a traumatic incident for yeah. people, but there is that drive to be like, no, we got to capture it, though. We got to be the ones. Because some of the commentary is way more overt. It's weird because Get Out had that like perfect balance of commentary, right? For at least a lot of people, it's all open to interpretation. And then us kind of went sewed into the into the neck of the, 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 the weeds of it. That yeah. some people were like, what? <laughs> I don't I don't understand. And then here, some they they sometimes get even more direct than I expected it to be. You know, when you flat out just have a, oh, he's from T, like she just picks up, he's from TMZ. Yeah. You know, and we all know everything about the exploitive qualities of what a TMZ person is like. Yeah. 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 Now people are taking interest in their little operation just because they have some kind of exploitable scenario on their hands. Yeah. And yeah, I, I feel like this movie has, yeah, definitely as compared to, get out and us at least you know it, here in this moment i feel like where those movies have a bit more of a straight or at least a more uh singular or unified kind of subtext they're they're getting at i feel like this movie does have more the same way like a film set has many converging departments and many converging art forms and themes at work i feel like that's happening in this movie too it's like there's a lot that you could say mm -hmm. about documentation and surveillance and you know again the order of nature and like you were talking about with like capitalism and exploiting trauma and exploiting natural occurrences and things like that like i feel like this is a movie that for being as straightforward as it is i appreciate that it balanced that without losing or it balanced it with that quality of you have this Gordy sequence, which I feel like for a lot of viewers could read as sort of like a random interlude or something that's a bit more obtuse in the overall picture. But I feel like, you know, you have a bunch of people interacting with this environment that are all coming from different backgrounds, different traumas, elements of their history are yeah. in the forefront or have been covered up in different ways. And so, yeah, I think this is a movie more so than the previous two that you can draw a lot of different perspectives out of. And I think that's a really cool way to go about it, too. I don't think you necessarily have to be like, no, the movie's about this under the surface. It could be an array of things because that's, I feel like, that's more akin to, to life, even. Yeah. It's funny because this movie, to me, at least upon first viewing, seems like it's more overt than his other films. And yet some stuff is still a little bit more unclear than his other films. <laughs> yeah, <too. laughs> like, yeah. Depending on what subject matter you're talking about. Because it does start with Gordy and... And and uh, from it starts from the POV as they reveal it's from the POV of Jupe, yeah. And they don't reveal that's Jupe's POV until later on in the film. And you know they have that thing with the shoe that's standing up, and he's kind of distracted by it, and he's not looking at the animal like he's looking at the shoe, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it seemed like that's just a big like foreshadowing symbolism shot that you have the chimp. The UFO, the animal, he's not looking at the animal. He's looking at the, the bad miracle, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. You know, and that's that's where his direction is pointed at. Is, is I don't know what the hell an up, uh, 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 that's the only thing I can at least gather from what the hell a standing shoe would mean yeah. in a situation like that. Yeah. Is like, this is not a good thing, but it's kind of a 
I don't, I don't know if I call it a miracle, but it is a is a bit odd. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's like a freak natural occurrence, and you could you could argue that maybe even though again it's not hailed by uh, electrical cutout, like maybe it is that like the mon- the the chimp just goes nuts yeah. for that period of time when that entity is present, and then yeah, eventually reverts. And two, I mean, I thought there was an interesting parallel there too, because like you know, in different ways, obviously the kid much more sentient, much more aware of this, but you're both kind of being plucked into a dog and pony show yeah that you don't both fully understand and so like i thought there was an interesting that fist bump moment is an interesting little bit of unity because it's like we are sort of the two people here who are like the most sort of innocent and being just swept up in this orchestration of you know things everybody thinks they can control and are just okay (laughs) and of course i I don't know how this was not mentioned the surveillance theme (laughs) to it all yeah. Like you're literally being surveilled. They bring up surveillance. Everything's captured. Like there's so much about use of capturing stuff on camera. <laughs> and yeah, you know, like there's there's so much happening in this one film. And I think it doesn't feel messy to me. Like, I don't know. I I'd still I still th- even after first viewing, you know, I haven't really had as much time for it. To, don't know we're near because I'm just talking about it right now um, for it to like sink in with me uh, fully. It does sort of feel like this would be my third out of the Jordan Peele films, but that's a still not. That doesn't mean I don't love this film though. <laughs> like I really, I thought it was. I think it's a great film. I, I would just rank it third for me out of the three that he's uh, directed so far, because I've the only thing I've really heard about this movie, um, the only thing I've really heard is is pot, kind of kind of that rhetoric is that I hear it's a little bit more fun. And that uh, it's maybe not his best one. That's what I've heard. And I didn't know what to get going in because I've only saw the, I didn't know the specifics of why people were saying that. I had only seen the first trailer. I heard there was another trailer that was more revealing. So we didn't even cover on this channel. I never watched it on my own time. Never played in the theaters either (laughs) whenever I went. So I was expecting to at least still be like that first trailer, which this movie does not really have that vibe for most of the movie Mm. because that first trailer is like brilliant that's an excellent trailer well they barely show you any they don't show you anything alien you're just left to go this feels kind of like an alien movie (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. and it feels like they're doing you know experimentation film and people are reading into all kinds of things i love how every theory was wrong on this movie yes like (laughs) every theory is wrong (laughs) yeah yeah yeah, yeah. People, people were like the the messed up face girl the the actress who survived yeah like, which oh she a horse human hybrid uh, and, 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 and oh my and, god that yeah there was all that uh, and they yeah that the fist is like some kind of hybrid horse baby or something like that instead of a monkey yeah and yeah. also uh, yeah, okay it's with, it's with black people it's short appeal so are they taking black people. And, and turning them into horses? Are they a dumb, is, it, is it slave is it, labor <laughs> allegory? What is it? Sorry like? to bother you, too. <laughs> yeah, or is it, are they abducting the culture and appropriating it? Why uh, are they slicing them with horses? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's how my mind was even going, is Gordy a former human? Is, is this horse a, a human? <laughs> this guy, yeah, no, totally, mean? totally. I, I mean, it's, it's, it is that brain tea. See, the funny thing is, for me, this is the one of his movies... Just on first impression, I was like, this is the one I would probably put on the most just because this is the movie I want to hang out with the most. Like, I really love the atmosphere and the aura of being in this movie and all the different places. And I love that you spend so much time of it in this in Agua Dulce and like away from the, you know, uh, you know, hubbub and the the ridiculousness almost of the film set. Mm-hmm. And and there is a quality, too, that's, like, not in your face. Like, this is a, a movie about people who work on movies. And, like, that's a pretty well-worn, like, I would call that probably, like, a subgenre in here somewhere because everybody, even, even the guy who's not fully, like, a movie-making character in Angel is still, like, you know, knows tech and cameras and is all about kind of documenting these things. And uh, and yeah, it's like it, it doesn't have that like indulgent celebratory aspect that those movies have, but it does have that flavor too. Like everybody's an entertainer, and it it struck me. I was like, is this significant? That yeah, the the girl, who, the other survivor of the Gordy set massacre, she comes and and you know she's got the veil on. It's such a striking image, and then ostensibly she just swallowed up, 
you know so i'm like is that unfinished business from the pat like like there are those things that i leave a movie like this excited to ponder and excited to discuss with people because i'm like that seems really pointed and really deliberate except i'm not really yeah. sure w- I, what that's about i mean she's brought there and, she, and for the rest of her life she's known as a survivor of that incident and then she's brought there to be thanked by the other guy, the guy who survived and got away clean, and, and who is, yeah. and who doesn't have to wear a T-shirt of himself with his old face on it. Yeah, know, like, no, no, she's being exploited. Too. Yeah, and or this is the only thing she can really do. Yeah, it's like the lines between exploitation and entertainment and the life that art imitates. <laughs> yeah, I think it's yeah. a. I, I think is very intense. I think the one thing with Jordan Peele is that he's. Is very intentional filmmaker, Nothing and it's also like really. a sci-fi, just B movie in a lot of ways too. Yeah, and uh, like a really high budget. I don't actually. I don't. Is this Blumhouse? No, it's not I don't Blumhouse. Think so, right? no. This is this is actually just a Universal joint. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't think he needs. He's got his own Blumhouse in Monkey's Paw now. So. Yeah, because this movie is uh, definitely looked the most ex- more expensive one of his films. Yeah, and I mean, like, the, there's a whole shot where it's just in the sky. Well, and a lot of their, like, I, I admired the contrast of you have, like, some really beautiful night, you know, low-light photography sequences, but you have a lot in broad daylight with clouds and, and you know, using the, the things that can obscure your vision in broad daylight for that. And so, like, you know, for a lot of this, you needed to have a good amount of effects, A, for the chimp, and that's even harder than an alien ship, I think, because, you know, that's more there's a better chance to get to the uncanny valley because obviously most people know what chimps look like but but i love the uh, the twist on the alien ship not being a ship it's the creature itself yeah and the way in which the creature evolves and you get these little glint like you start the movie out basically in its mouth and then uh, you know you go from there to seeing how it becomes this big billowing like it's almost beautiful by the end but also very sort of strange and foreign looking and uh, yeah, that, that could not have been cheap. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Yeah, that was a cool movie. I thought it was really cool. Yeah, uh, I, I had a I had a lot of fun with it, and I think everything from a technical standpoint is excellent. Especially the way he handled. I mean, obviously the whole thing with the. I mean, I think the twist that it's actually I didn't see that coming at all. That that the the it's not a UFO. Because mm-hmm. it's, it's completely designed to look like a UFO. It's a UAP. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, um, so I didn't see that twist coming at all. That's an actual creature. I wasn't even exactly sure what he what um, OJ was getting at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah, he yeah. when he said like maybe it's not a ship. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, I had no idea what, <laughs> what he was saying. Are you about to get <laughs> semantic with me here? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's an yeah. aircraft of some kind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so when um so when that reveal did happen, I think that that it was a brilliant twist because it makes it a lot scarier mm. at that point and it it puts everything in a different perspective. Yeah. Like when they are when they are in the earlier parts of the movie when when you could hear the screaming voices inside of the creature and you're like, okay, it must be like alien experiments going on, and it kind of gives you hope that maybe there's a way to get out of it too. Yeah, you know. And then you're like, oh no, they're just being devoured. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, that's and way. it's just spitting out yeah. everything it can't digest. <laughs> and the way he handled perspective on not only the exteriors of the skies and such, which by the way I love, because a lot of the times it would become these semi one takes that felt a little bit like a video game. You know, like in in video games where it's it's not. First person POV, but it's like close to the character. It's and still you can a see the exterior. Display, yeah, yeah. where you're like it's right behind you and everywhere it's you like look. It's like the person yeah. next to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And and I love the way those shots were handled. And um, but even some of the inside shots, like like when the people are just being sucked up, and like that is and how then when it gets like really scuzzy and in, internal, and you're like, what the fuck? Is what does this gizzard, look like? Yeah. yeah, you're like, this doesn't look like some big. Like he's cluing you in. That this is a creature. Yeah, this isn't yeah. a shit. There's not going to be a big control center with computers and <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's just going to be more and more like organ- strange foreign organic material. Yeah, and then how it resides in the sky. Um, I thought that was great. I think, just, just a stray thought, but I feel like par- part of this is, is too about like the ways in which everybody in their own different ways like engage with storytelling and recording surveillance, etc. Because you have your your two protagonists who are like in the sort of like workaday world of fantasy orchestration. Like they have 
Let's talk about I got mouths to feed. I got to get up in the morning. I got to prep the horses. I got to walk them around. You know, like that's that's the day to day grunt work. And then you have somebody like Jupe, who is, you know, more of the celebrity traumatic story aside celebrity character. And then you have the cinematography of Antlers, who literally is there to like die for the art, who's just like, you know, you, you will never get that perfect shot. So I'm going to die getting the impossible shot. Like it's everybody's dedication to the art in a way. And it almost seems like it comes out on this balance of like, you know, uh, 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 OJ and M are going to be certainly better off than they were before because they have like now clinched their place in cinema history. But also, you know, like they're they're on like the most level ground out of everybody because they do have to just live on the ground with the normal people. Yeah. You know, I do think the see, I, think, I, I get why people would judge this movie a more like heart be harsher mm. on this movie as compared to his other films, because it's Jordan Peele. Yeah. If this was some random filmmaker, like up-and-coming guy, and they made this, people would be like, this is brilliant. Who is this? I know. <laughs> yeah. If this was a debut, people would lose their yeah. minds. But it's it's just the fact that he whatever he makes, it's going to be compared to his other movies. Yeah. That's just the position he's in right now. But even Us was divisive upon first arrival, I feel like. And I feel like some people had a stronger negative reaction to Us. Which in some yeah. ways I guess is worse. You never want like a meh reaction, but uh, yeah, I mean, I to what? me he's clinched that debut three. Like you always point out, like you got to have three great films to like solidify your. Yeah, and they're different. Yeah. Well, I think us while getting that negative reaction, I think a lot of people couldn't wrap their heads around the concept. Even I had to kind of like look into it a little bit more. Be like, what the? There's some stuff I just don't get. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> like, I, I don't understand. Yeah. Um, and so, and I think that detracts. I remember even being at the theater and some stranger just talking to us. I had no idea who we yes. were. It wasn't like, hey, real rejects. It wasn't even that. And then he hated it. <laughs> some black dude who came up to us and was just like, hated the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 he's and, like, and, and every time we were like, oh, I don't know, I kind of liked it. Yeah. He was like, nah, man. Yeah. <laughs> just let me tell you a little bit more about why I didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> and that had a lot to do with how he, like, he couldn't understand what the reveal was. People and, get upset about that that thing of like it's a very it's, fine line how you handle a review <laughs> yeah <laughs> and how you handle ambiguity and and, yeah. and you're not there's a certain percentage of people you're not going to please that way but it is interesting to find the line where people go okay i'm excited to ponder this versus oh what a cop out you didn't even bother to you know fill us yeah. in on what you're trying to do you know well i, I to me it's like the uh, not that i want to make this a comparison video to his other films the the th I thought the first like hour and a half of us is more thrilling than this movie. Like I was, I, I was so, I was like on the edge of my seat with that first hour and a half. And I, I really love the mood of that. Like, this is fun. Yeah. This is really fun and engaging. And there's some suspenseful, exciting. I got goosebumps quite a few times when watching this. And, yeah. you know, I can't say a lot of movies really do that for me. You know, I usually just get like nipple chills, but to get goosebumps all over my body, <laughs> where I'm like, it's all it's, it's full body everywhere. nipple chill. <laughs> yeah, that that was um, that was provocative to me. <laughs> I fucking loved it. Yeah, and, absolutely. And so I really, I thought this was a really great film, and I think another a lot of people are also kind of writing this off as it's not it's it doesn't have any deeper meaning or anything like that. And no. I'm like, I don't know about that. I mean, it, I I think. I think that there's a lot of things that are not like fully laid out for a reason because you kind of have to interpret it. And I don't know what the I've yet to watch a think piece or an ending explained or a breakdown of it because they're all filled with spoilers. So I I imagine there are more intellectual people than myself out there who have really written some great shit yeah, <laughs> to yeah, explain yeah. this. Taking all the time to consider yeah. and yeah and and hammer down that argument. Yeah, this is a brainstorm discussion here. And I, I, I think that there is some wonderful nuance to it. Mm -hmm. I guess the thing that sometimes the humor is very rare. I think the TMZ thing kind of pushed it a little too far with the comedy for me. If I had like a detail to pick apart, I'd be like a little too much. It is the most straight it's like parody. It, it's the most straightforward, and it's the it's it's weird because it's one of those times where parts of the subtext do start to breach over into like the literal text. Where I'm like, okay, I can, I can tell. Like anytime TMZ shows up, I feel like it becomes this low hanging fruit of like, and now we're gonna do toxic surveillance culture commentary because this guy only cares about his camera and is completely yeah. oblivious to the rest of the situation and is like a dick about it too. 
so yeah, like it's like again, that is tubes. <laughs> then again, yeah, it's the problem. It's like that's not wrong, but but also <laughs> that is that, yeah. but also you would hope that yeah, in, in an environment like this, and it's not the point, but yeah, you would hope that the human might shine through. Yeah, because that's what the rest of the movie is doing, and you see a character like Angel, who I didn't expect because I haven't seen Brandon per, uh, Perea much before, so I was like, okay, this is gonna be a one-off bit for people who know Fry's electronics, and that character is not going to come back. And then this character who presents as an asshole who's disengaged then becomes endearing over time. And in the same movie, I would have, yeah, expected a little sprinkling of humanity on the TMZ guy or something. Because also, too, he shows up with this, like, reflective helmet. And, and I was like, you seem like someone who might know shit about what's actually going on. But no, it's it's just uh, it's just Harvey Levin. <laughs> and this would add some great stunt work in here, too. Totally. Like, I love yeah. this shot when uh, uh, Emerald is... Uh, is uh, when it looks like she's about to be taken, and then she's just like thrown into the other side. Yeah, uh, that was that, that whole sequence. I thought the way the handling perspective on that did feel, at times, like when you're watching a, a video game character. Mm -hmm. What is that POV style called? Is it a is it a heads up display? Is that what it's called? I think so. I don't. I don't know. I've never bothered. Or all, I mean, you could the, just call it first person, kind of like the Batman or Spider Man games, but not a. Not, not literally a, not first a, person, but it's... No. Oh, my God. Do I not know any video game names anymore? <laughs> um, you got it. You got it. Fuck Doom. Time Doom. Not, not Doom POV, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But uh, no, yeah, it's still like a first person perspective because I think the, the smart thing is they do so much both camera motion, but also they just put the camera in places a human would be. So you're watching that all happen from eye level, you know, and, and that, I think, lends this quality of, like, it feels like you're just there watching this take place. And the way they move the camera isn't, like, super shaky and crazy. It's it's usually with the fluidity that, you know, you could whip your neck around. So, yeah, like, there is a bit of that video game heads-up display kind of vibe there, and I think it's chosen really well and it enhances really well. And, and two, I mean, like, you've got a lot of great horse based stunts which i feel like they recreate that you know profile galloping shot at one point and like you know they do uh with daniel kaluuya like he's they he's do. riding and stuff and like he even came off natural and and you know having having grown up with people who rode horses oftentimes i can you know at least know enough to see when i'm like oh this actor hasn't really ridden before <laughs> or you know isn't really kind of in uh unison with the horse but even those things like felt really natural and like the the way they embody the whole just life on the ranch i really bought yeah. you know i think daniel kaluuya is an easy performance to overlook no he does not have a hypnotized and oh my god look at him cry brilliant yeah. acting uh, single scene. tear like that's a brilliant he's brilliant and get out he is he's brilliant he um is. i think he's great here mm -hmm. i i think he's absolutely excellent i love how uh subtle and internal his whole performance is and so much of him just feels it feels really human in a situation that is so science fiction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's really great at not, yeah, at, at like playing this laconic character, doesn't talk much, and who also like isn't the most expressive, but still exudes so much light. It's like in that scene where the kids are pranking him in the barn, he's not like freaking out and trembling. His face is mostly still, but you can still feel what's going on underneath. And I think, yeah, he's he is terrific. And I felt this since Black Mirror and get out especially is he, like, he's great at throwing things away but in a meaningful way yeah you know well i think he he has a very specific choices in this movie too with his body language like kind of hunched over it looks like he gained a little bit of weight for this role too and then uh like that his 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 difficulty making eye contact yeah i, I think is another great choice for this kind of character as well and then it, it contrasts so well with kiki palmer who is like the total opposite, but they do feel like brother and sister. Yeah. They they have such great chemistry together, even though their energies are wildly different. And I, I like moments that don't as much as sometimes it becomes very meta and, and you become very aware you're watching a movie. And that might be one of the detracting qualities for me, hmm. is that I wasn't ever fully immersed in this movie. It, I would I was pretty much aware I was watching a film the whole time. Hmm. And um but I still love I still love that though because I think that's the, the it's so aware because especially when you're doing a movie about making movies and yeah, film and all this yeah. stuff I'm gonna be naturally more aware than 
the way they talk about like this like the cinematographer character antlers like his character in particular there's just more things to make me aware of what i'm watching yeah. like when you're going to fry's electronics and you're dealing with this tech guy and i'm like i know so many guys like this dude and <laughs> i have i have been in this yeah. exact situation at that exact store <laughs> yeah yeah but then like the the cinematographer personality seems to be a uh, like a it doesn't broach into the you know the the TMZ guy. It's not caricature, but it is but like a cheeky. It's close like, to yeah. because yeah, yeah, of course the cinematographer <laughs> of everyone on set would be this guy, yeah, <laughs> with this motivation, who is willing to come out for the project, for the art, for the perfect and shot. It will, he will die for like yeah. the perfect shot. Yeah, the, there are things like that because um, there are scenes where I'm definitely fully immersed, and there are other times where I would just be more observant. Um, what was the point beforehand? Uh, movies about making movies and, and them kind of breaking the meta fourth wall that way or, or not being fully immersed. Um, no, and those are all the points I was already making. The point before that. I'm trying to walk backwards one step at a time. <laughs> no, yeah, run backwards. Uh, we were talking about Daniel Kaluuya and his uh, lost understated it. performance. It's all gone. It's all gone. So. Kiki Palmer and him. Doesn't matter. Gordy. <laughs> You know, too, I think the another thing, too, is that animals often don't get as much as there's, a, 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 you know, and, and we've heard story. I feel like most of us by this point have heard some of the horror stories that happen on sets with animals. There's a famous one that was going around with the dogs in that Christian movie. It was a Christian movie or was oh, it just a dog yeah. movie. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember. Something recently, though. Yeah. Was it, was it a dog's purpose? I think or so. was it the other one that came out around the same time that had a similar title? I don't know if it was yeah. Dog's Way Home or something like that. But one of those, yeah, had like egregious onset animal. Well, it's easy to wrangling. do that. Yeah, it's easy. It's easy to mistreat animals. <laughs> but one thing I loved was how they would show, like, they would cut to the t the the characters. They treated the horses like actual characters. Yeah, and each and one like, of them has a moment to kind of advance the the mystery by responding directly to what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and there there's a significance to the animals. So yeah, yeah. This was uh, a very. It was I I guess out of the uh, the three, this is his most self aware movie. Sure. Yeah, I would say so. Definitely. And so that made me more of a self aware viewer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I bet. I bet some of his experiences, not that he has the same experiences as these characters, but I bet some of his experiences in the film industry at large, but especially as a director, have probably helped influence what this became. Because yeah, it's not even like a director character. No. No. <laughs> I mean, you know, you have you have Oz Perkins and you have like that one other guy who's like doing the main communications at the front, but you, it's not even quite clear what their roles are on set. And yeah, it's like of, of everybody on set, the only person who really like makes an impression and stands out is the, is the DP. He's so fun. He is. He's I love that so, character. He's, he's oh, like has so like just too much gravitas I know. to the point that you're like it's funny and it's working though yeah <laughs> yeah this could cool. have easily just been a parody you know yeah of that only people who like film would get totally of the obsessed cinema a lot of people don't even know what a cinematographer is <laughs> so that, that, like but this does shine a light on like the, what a cinematographer actually does you know yeah and again they they are inclined i would i would guess that stereotype they would be inclined to be the most sort of like high minded you know i'm the observer of the set i am the most birds eye view on all these circumstances it is through my eye this is seen like you could totally see how they would be usually they make that character the the director yeah yeah, yeah absolutely I'm... whereas no i mean the cinematographer yeah you're the one who has to translate the director's neurosis into an image all right guys please tell us down below your thoughts of what you interpret nope to be about subscribe click that bell leave a like last but not least i'll send this with a patron of the day shout out <laughs> mikhail linden mikhail yes wanted to shout you out because this movie stars black people <laughs> and you are the whitest person we know you are you so would be you, you take over the spotlight now that's what you do <laughs> yeah that's take, what you do mikhail so this video has been all about you this whole time my dude this you, is your time to shine you are the guy who captured the man riding the horse you are my bridge 
you are responsible for film. Not even the subject, but just you. You alone are responsible for all that we see here, all that we enjoy on a daily basis. It's all you. I love that about you, man. You are an absolute delight. You smell like corn puffs. Mm. I love a good corn puff. I do, too. I'd love to dip you in almond milk because I'm allergic to dairy and then eat you up. Dude, deep fry you with a Twinkie. Enjoy all that creamy McHale goodness. Yeah, man. You taste so good. I'm not talking about, like, you know, perverted stuff, YouTube, since you guys are so sensitive about it. I'm talking about devouring him, you know, like eating him. Yeah, like, like Army Hammer. Actual eating, not, not, not something gross. I'm not, a, yeah. I'm not a perv. Yeah. I'm talking about chewing him. Yeah, I'm <laughs> gnawing. Nibbling at his epidermis. A light chomp or two or four or seven or yeah. and as many as it takes, really. So don't be sensitive. You're the Tootsie Roll of our channel. <laughs> All right, Mikhail, can't wait to eat you, buddy. I don't really know. How many licks does it take to get to the center of Mikhail? <laughs>